This final direction creates a total angle here. Because this is where the cue ball is actually going to go. And I should be able to get above this diamond. That's a good yeah. one, Rowley. Hi, I'm Rowley, and I'm at the Denver International Airport. No other airport in the world has as many spooky statues or creepy paintings. I think I speak for everyone when I say, what were they thinking? Jesus Christ. I'm in Colorado to take a lesson from internet billiard sensation Dr. Dave. Let's get started. This is from average to good. Here I am at the home of Dr. Dave, okay? He has hundreds of videos, he's all over YouTube. Look him up, uh, it's all about the math of pool and it's mind-blowing stuff. And I've obviously already been here, but it just works better if you pretend it's a big meat cute. So let's try that. He's home. Oh, hey! Well, you're the famous Raleigh Williams from YouTube, aren't you? Allegibly. All right, I'm excited. Great. Let's do it. You are an actual PhD doctor at the University of Colorado State, is that right? That's right, Raleigh. And what do you teach there? I teach mechanical engineering, okay. which involves a lot of physics, which is part of my interest in pool, the study of motion. And you also teach at Billiards University. What's that all about? Uh, I'm one of the founding professors of the Billiard University, and we developed a playing ability exam to measure ability and to help people improve in all the important skills of pool. We also offer diplomas for people that excel to certain levels. Excellent. Now, we are not in any regular pool hall. We're actually in your basement where you have a beautiful Olhausen table. Tell me a little bit about this table. Yes, I'm very proud of this table and, and happy to have it here because it was previously owned by Robert Byrne, who was one of my idols. He was one of the uh, pioneers in billiard education. He wrote amazing books and produced great videos that kind of set the bar for everybody in the future like myself. So he inspired me to, to really create great content. and. Uh, I always think about him when I'm shooting because it's his table and when I'm writing or doing a new video I think I got to do as well as Robert did and uh, he passed away a few years ago. He's a BCA Hall of Famer. They honored him for his great contribution to our sport so I honor him by shooting all my future videos on his table. Excellent. Well yes. I've never met the man but I feel confident in saying he would be proud of what you've added to the pool community. Well thank you Raleigh. No problem. That's a real sentiment genuine moment here. You saw it first folks. All right, enough of that heartfelt crap. Let's uh, play a couple of racks so you can kind of gauge my skill level. How about I that? look forward to it, Raleigh. Great. And prepare to be underwhelmed. Okay. okay, I make the six ball on the break, but I don't okay. really have any kind of shot on the one. You can thank me for the wing ball going in. I gave you a good rack. Oh, thank you so much. All right, much. you're welcome. Good hit, Raleigh. Not quite there, but might be able to throw it in. Dave makes the one ball and decides to go for an early nine ball oh. victory. It's not that far off, but it doesn't drop and I get to come back to the table. I make the two. Good, Raleigh. And the three. I have to shoot a really hard shot on the four, but it goes in. Good shot. You just had to make that one. Didn't have to worry about shape. And so I don't pay attention to five. Butcher the oh. ball. Oh, Overcut. Raleigh. Overcut. After all those good shots. I know. And Dave quickly cleans up the rest of the table. Rack two, Dave breaks and makes the eight ball, leaving the cue ball up table for the one, which he makes, then drops the two, and the three, puts the four in the corner, and comes up for the five in the same corner. Makes the six, the seven in the side, and perfect shape on the nine ball, completing a break and run where the cue ball didn't run into a ball that he wasn't directly shooting at. Game three, Dave makes the wing ball with shape on the one. One in the corner this time. Skins. Looks good. He makes the one and then we sort of have this meandering conversation about this first This would have been nicer, Raleigh, because I'm on the wrong side of the three now. I'm Always walk to... around the table to see yeah. different perspectives. Sometimes you see things you don't see otherwise. What were you going to say, Raleigh? I'm not used to hearing my name said so many times <laughs> at me, and it's very jarring. Oh, Raleigh's not used to hearing his name? I guess not. It's Pronounced weird. Raleigh very often? No. Okay. It's, I mean, it's fine. I guess it's my, it's my <laughs> name. i got to be cool with it, but it's very, it's like, 
I'm like, hi, am I in trouble? What's going on? <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try to do something fancy, Raleigh. I'll try to go off three, power it off three rails, get a shot at the four. Okay. <laughs> Not necessarily a wise choice, but we're here to have fun, Raleigh. Gotcha, Raleigh. Oh, yeah. Is that enough juice, Raleigh? Is it enough juice, no, Raleigh? It is. It's got to get past it, that six, Raleigh. And it did. Okay. <laughs> Great three rail shot. Oh, thank you, sir. Is sir an acceptable moniker to Raleigh or yeah, as an alternative? I mean, okay. Yeah, I think it's probably a really good uh, teaching technique to like. Oh, to use the person's you, name? You're drawing people. Yeah, you help say you the feel name connected. Like, almost, yeah. almost hugged. In fact, almost like hugged. Okay. Extremely hugged. Yeah, Very, sorry. That, use, and that's usage, a professional name usage. teacher's hug right there. <laughs> nice and open. Nothing untoward. Yeah, nothing exactly. inappropriate. Great shot. I overcut that a little bit, so messed up my angle here. If I were smart, I would have come off the rail, Raleigh. Period. Roll period on. before the Raleigh there. Yeah, I'll, d I'll add it in the period All and right. then just have the next sentence start with Raleigh. Okay, there you go. Good. Great. Good. <clears throat> so I could carry him off the eight and follow four a little bit. Oh yeah, that's, that's a probably cool. the that's a good look. Best approach there. Just got to make sure I get below this line here. Period. Oh yeah. This is obvious, but just to show you, you know, here I can be confident. The natural angle is going like that. I'm just going to put a little bit of outside spin just to take it out a little bit. Okay. Just going to check it again. Looks good. Actually, I don't need any spin at all. Perfect line. Oof. Boom. Game four, Dave breaks and makes the Ooh. same wing ball for the third time in a row this guy knows how to break. He leaves himself a thin cut on the one. Oh, baby boy. Powers the two in, drops the four in. Yeah, obviously I'd like to be here, but I knew that was too hard to hold, so just taking my medicine going off two rails here. Then the five, comes around for the six, he makes the six and plays a few rails for the seven. That's what I might do. I'm gonna bump into the eight. Now what are you doing when you do one of those? So here I'm visualizing, using the piece I'm gonna talk about later. Okay. The direction the cue ball wants to naturally head, in the natural angle direction. So I'm looking at that, it's gonna come off the rail and it should get a pretty solid hit on the eight. Cool. Oh, hung it. Well, you might get a shot before the end of this game. Uh, you know, you shouldn't give me a shot, Raleigh. You well, won't. Well, I, sh I shouldn't, but... I gently hit the seven. Good choice, Raleigh. Don't, don't play for position if you already have it. Take what's offered. Yeah. Put the eight in the side. Good job. Uh-oh. Mm, a little close. And I'm about to miss the nine ball, but luckily... Raleigh, let me interrupt for a second. You're looking at the line like this. Mm -hmm. Why don't you come over here and actually look at it, Raleigh? Gotcha. <laughs> you can see the take, line better. Take the time. None okay. of this, none of this uh, giraffe thing. No more giraffe. Okay. <laughs> Excellent shot. There we go. Okay, Dave, we played a couple racks. Who can remember who won most of them? It's not important. What are we going to learn uh, right now? Well, what's the most important thing in pool, Raleigh? Friendship. Friendship, I agree, Raleigh. I feel the bond. Yeah, Already. It's strong. Okay, it's strong. <laughs> right. yeah. You need to move that cue ball to a place where the next shot's going to be easy. And being yeah. able to visualize where that cue ball is going to go and be confident that you know where it's going to go and yeah. not just guess and trusting your intuition that might not be solid enough. Like pros have perfect intuition because they put in the long hours and they have you know, a ton of successful experience, right? Right. And I'm not willing but, to do that. Well, not like most people aren't. Good. So I've developed some techniques over the years, like the Dr. Dave P sign and this three times the angle system we're going to look at. That, uh, that lets you know where it's going to go immediately. Great. So let's get to work. Let's do it. So what's, what's going on here? Well, we're playing eight ball, and we want to pocket that one and get shape on the eight. Okay. So what, what strikes your fancy here? Uh, what, would you, what would you think you might do? Hard as you can, just blast it. Just always smack it and hope, hope the best yeah. works out, right? Yeah. yeah. That's... So that could work out, you know, but you might scratch. You know, you might hit a point on the pocket. You might go too far. You, you, know, it might, you don't know where it's going to end up. But sure. we have to end up in a pretty small little zone here to pocket yeah. that eight. So here, you, you want to slow roll this, just to have the cue ball naturally go over here. But your intuition might say, ooh, I might scratch. So you don't want to have any doubt like that. <laughs> right. We want to know it's not going to scratch. Well, this is where the Dr. Dave P sign can come in handy. When you're rolling the cue ball, 
uh, this, this uh, these fingers. The first finger shows you the direction the cue ball is going. Okay. And I'll help you with this. Now, a lot of people point at the ball. That's wrong. The cue ball is not going there. The cue ball is going here to pocket that ball. You point from the center of the cue ball to the center of where the cue ball is going to be when it makes contact. That's right. Okay. We call that Got the it. ghost ball, right? The, if this finger points in the direction the cue ball is coming, the other finger will point where it's going to go for a slow roll shot. So when I do that and check this, it's pointing just to the right of this corner pocket, which looks pretty dangerously close. But I trust this to know, I trust this enough to know that I'm not going to scratch. Okay. And therefore I have no doubt where most people would be worrying about the scratch, they'd probably try to put a little draw on this. But if you put a little draw or stun on this, yeah, then you're coming good, across yeah. the line of the eight and you have a very tiny margin for error. So this is a good example where if we use the peace sign, it'll tell us where the ball's gonna go if you roll it. And I know I'm gonna be safe. This finger's pointing this way, my other finger's pointing about right there. And you might okay. think, well, that's pretty close to the pocket. Aren't you worried? No. Not worried. I'm not worried. It's okay. going to go that way. All right. I'll be worried, but for you. Where did it go, Raleigh? Oh! Did it go where I was pointing? Yeah, right where you were pointing. <laughs> all right. Very useful. That's great. How do I know that my hand is the same? It's all peace and love, brother. Everybody has peace and love in their heart, man. I, can, I sense it. You got it. No, honestly. Uh, were you a hippie back in the day? <laughs> my sisters were hippies. Okay. My older sisters were hippies. Did you get a hippies. contact hippie from them? At any point? A little bit. I got a little bit of hippie from them. Okay. A little bit. All right. What I found is that when most people form a relaxed but firm peace sign, it's not limp. That's my It's not super stretched. My motto. I'm relaxed. Relaxed but firm. But firm. Yeah. <laughs> most people, their angle is very close to 30 degrees. I've okay. tested young people, old people, skinny people, fat people, and everybody, male, male, female, everybody's peace sign, if it's firm and relaxed, is very close to 30 degrees, which happens to be the angle the natural angle that the cue ball goes at Almost when it's rolling. Almost like human beings were uh, created to play pool. It turns out, you know, depending on, on what the cut angle is, the angle is slightly different. Mm. But over a wide range, the uh, angle is very close to 30 degrees. So it helps to learn the 30 degree angle first, because that works as an average over a wide range of shots. We want to calibrate our piece on, Raleigh, because you have to be able to visualize the proper angle. Okay. All right, and, we're, and we ha also have to know when does this piece sign apply? We already said the cue ball has to be rolling slow. Mm -hmm. Turns out it works for faster speed too. We'll cover that later. Okay. But for a slow rolling ball, the cue ball obeys this peace sign. You have to be able to visualize this angle. You also have to know when does the peace sign work. All right, it doesn't work for every shot at the table. It only works for rolling cue ball and over a certain range of angles. Okay. And I'm going to show you those ranges of angles right now. Great. So the range is between a three quarter and one quarter ball hit. Okay. Have you heard that before? Ball hit fractions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best I mean, way I, to I can't yes. I can't walk in New York without hearing the phrase ball hit fractions. All and you could just place. you could give me a lecture right now on it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Imagine the cue ball being the moon and the one ball being the sun. If you look uh, along this line, you can see it's eclipsing. The moon is eclipsing a certain amount of the sun. And right now it's eclipsing three quarters of that ball. Okay. It's covering up three quarters of that ball. Got it. And this is a fairly full hit, fairly small cut angle. The peace sign works here. I'll show you later. The peace sign also works. This is the other extreme. If you get down low. And that's a one quarter. Why don't you look at this one? Okay. Yeah. How much, how much of the sun is the moon covering up? Oh, it's got to be a quarter. Exactly a quarter. Like 0.25 or something, right? Like maybe even uh, 2 over 8. I got to do my math on that one. So if the cue ball is anywhere in this range. Now this is a wide range of shots. Yeah. In fact, a good player, they usually like to have an angle on a shot. Why, why does a good player like to have an angle on a shot? Because you want to have the ability to move the cue ball around. You don't want exactly. to have it straight in because then you've only got straight and back. Exactly. When it's straight in, that's all you can do is roll forward, stop, or come back. Right. But when you have an angle, you can go anywhere in the whole table. Yeah. So a good pool, pool player is always going to leave an angle somewhere in this range. They're never going to leave a, a ball that's way out here. They don't want a super thin cut right, like that. Right. That's too difficult to shot. And if they're too full, they have, they're limited what they can do. So right. this is a very common range. So for most pull shots with a good player, the peace sign works if they're rolling it, if they're not having to put backspin and do something fancy. Gotcha. All right. Cool. So the other thing we have to know is if we want to be very accurate, you have to learn how to change your peace sign depending on the angle. Okay. Now it turns out the biggest angle is when you have a half ball hit. That's what this is. Ah, okay. We're eclipsing half the ball. And it makes sense. Anytime you're in the middle of the range, that's when it's usually going to be the maximum. It's the peak. Yeah, it's like yeah, a peak I'm of the sure. curve. It's yes. a Gaussian distribution. That sounds good to me. 
<laughs> you got to know all these terms. I know those right? terms, yes. Okay, okay. The, two eighth, the two eighths kind of threw me off a little bit. Oh, though. yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, with your so. sisters being hippies, you should know all about eights, right? <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Raleigh, you're getting a little weird now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Have you been uh, uh, taking advantage of some of the Colorado offerings with your hippie uh, How dare mentality? You, Dave. Okay. How dare you? <laughs> It is called a Mile High City. You know? Oh, okay. <laughs> right. that's a Dr. Dave original. All right. Maybe you should edit that out, Raleigh. Oh, okay. I'll let you decide. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. So it turns out uh, this angle, 30 degrees, is a good average, and it gets you pretty close over this wide range of shots. And we'll show that. But if you want to be really accurate, like here, that 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 scratch was pretty close. Yeah. Here, I wanted to make sure I was accurate, and I recognize this is close to a half ball hit. With the half ball hit, you have to stretch your angle a little bit. So your 30 degree piece on, we have to stretch it. If I do my firm it relax, but then stretch a little bit, now I have the exact half ball hit angle. And see how well they match. Okay, here we go. Firm but relax. Firm but relax right there. Over the page. How close are you? Oh, I'm, I'm dead on. Peace and love, brother. Oh, that's, that's, that's <laughs> all day. How much do I have to stretch to do a half ball hit? And feel that. You gotta remember what that feels like, Raleigh. Yeah. And let's practice. Let me show you, and demonstrate once. Sure. So remember, the first finger, you want to come over this, and it helps to go actually go on, imagine the direction the cue ball's heading. Mm -hmm. It's coming this way, you're over the center of the ball, and you're stopping when your knuckle is next to the ball. So you're not stopping here, you're not going over here, you're stopping when your knuckle of this finger is right next to the ball. And that's because the, within, when the knuckle is there, the center of the ball is over the center of the cue ball, which is over the center of your palm. It's a little more complicated than that, but I've learned over the years that this works best for most people. When you know, when you actually, if you actually look where these lines come together, the point is actually back here. And you might think, why is it there? Well, because when the ball hits, it does move a little bit before it curves. Mm, okay. So this just, I've learned, works best for most people. When the knuckle is over the... Over the ball. Over the ball, okay. Now in this case, it happens to be right over the edge of the ball, because a 30 degree, this is a half ball hit, which is a 30 degree cut angle. Okay. It's also called a center to edge hit. So the center of the cue ball is going, is aiming right at the edge of that ball. So the knuckle is exactly over the edge. This is a very stretched. Again, the knuckle is right over the, gotcha. right next to that ball. Excellent. And now do you see you are pointing where yeah. I was pointing before. Okay. And so we, we, know, we know we're not going to scratch, Raleigh. Now you do have to aim the shot carefully also. Oh, because I got it's got to go right into the center, or else it's gonna throw. You know, but off. the beauty of this, even if you're off a little bit, the angle is still fairly close. Okay. But if you hit this too thin, you might scratch. Yeah, I'm, yes. I'm worried about that. Yeah. And I think you still. have a shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All day. Now, one thing I just noticed, Raleigh, I noticed when we were playing earlier. Mm -hmm. um, how do you control your speed on a shot? What do you, when you say, if I want to hit a shot hard versus soft, what do you change about your stroke? Do you, do you, are you even aware of it? Or yeah, 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 I think I, I, uh, I don't accelerate as fast. That's one way to control speed. But in general, more people will have better control if they change their stroke length. So uh, for, yeah. for a firm shot, you obviously have to use your whole stroke and accelerate over the whole bridge length mm -hmm. to get good power. But for a short shot, you're going to be more consistent and accurate if you use a shorter stroke for a softer speed shot. And that way you can kind of stroke almost the same way every time. So like golf, golf club selection. You want to use the same stroke in every shot, but just change your club. Gotcha. Well, this is our club, how far we pull back. The, the stroke length. Yes. Okay, cool. That's so a great... You want to try one like that? Yeah, that's a hot tip. So let's try a little shorter stroke. And you can still go through the ball. You just, you know, you're, you have less room to accelerate, mm. so you're going to end up with less speed. Yeah, when I when sure. I need to hit like the, the extremely soft shots, I definitely hit it with the shortest. Sure, uh, if, I may, if I may here. Sure. So one option is to actually shorten your bridge. And I actually do that for a very finessey shot. Yeah, yeah. But in general, I like to do, keep everything as much the same as possible. Okay. Same bridge length and just change the stroke length. Just go back a little bit. Yeah, okay. A power shot, you go back all the way. Soft shot, just go back a little bit. And you still go through the ball. Great. Back here, through the ball. The acceleration and distance is what gives you the right speed. Cool. Same bridge length if oh, you want, yeah. your normal bridge length, just a shorter stroke. Now you'll notice when you watch the video, you had short strokes, and then the last one, that was much better, Raleigh. It came all the way back. But yeah, last stroke, that's, you know, uh, so that's gonna take some little practice. Yeah, yeah. But I think that will help your speed control uh, going forward. Great. That'll help you go from being average 
to good to even better Raleigh. Dang. There's the a world? big spectrum, Raleigh, and yeah. we don't, I'm not sure exactly where you're on the spectrum, but I, see, I think you're you're above the average part of the spectrum, Raleigh. And I could potentially be the greatest on, the, on that part of this. That's a true statement. You, you have that potential. There's a non-zero chance. You have that potential, Raleigh. Got it. Got it. Thank you. <laughs>